Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumu Kahua Theater. We're coming to you live from the heart of downtown Honolulu in Pioneer Plaza, very near Kumu Kahua Theater. I would like to let you know right off the bat that if you would like to get engaged in the conversation, you can by tweeting us at thinktech I. And anytime you'd like to join us in the downtown studio, you can do that too. Just email jay at thinktechhawaii.com and he will hook you up. I'm really excited to introduce my guest to you today. I was around Christmas time. I was in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I stopped into a little shop called On the Edge, and there I found some prints of uh, drawings and paintings work that just resonated with me so intensely it felt as though these had been created specifically for me so of course I had to get a hold of the amazing woman who made them and say please be on my show her name is Carolina Adams and she's joining us from Arizona welcome Carolina thank you for having me oh my gosh I, I really uh, I really appreciate the fact that you took me seriously when I said, I need to talk to you, I need to have you on my show, and then you're taking time out of your day to do this and talk with an absolute stranger about your work, which is so personal. It is. <laughs> it really is. And we've got quite a few, um, Zuri has quite a few of your images that she's going to show uh, while we're talking, um, and everyone at home will be able to see just how personal the, these pieces are. And um, Zuri, who is our studio overlord, just a note, the, the two pieces that are number one and number two, those are the pe my pieces that I bought. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, when you wanna, we can, we can show those and talk, um, talk about those. Where to begin? Uh, are you in Scottsdale? No, I'm in Chandler. Chandler, oh, okay. Okay. So it's about 20 minutes from Scott sale. Oh, okay. And you, so you have your work in a few different galleries in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And you said, you mentioned that you do shows as well? Yes. I just recently started doing shows. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, mm -hmm. you have an amazing body of work. I mean, when I was going through the pieces online, it was difficult for me to curate which ones to include in the show. You have a lot of work. And that's not even half of what I do. Oh, really? I'm really, yeah, I'm really bad about updating my website, um, which I need to get better at. But I draw three, four times a day or a week. And so, yeah, so I have a lot. Wow. Okay. So, and you mentioned something on your website about you'll wake up in the middle of the night and a place, a, a, a drawing will be just inside of you. You have to get it out. It's the new, yes, it's the new style that you've, um, so I do um, humanoids, faceless um, figures, and um, those are a little more um, about my conscious. I know what I'm doing. It's the stories that I'm getting out of me. It's the experiences that I need to get out of me, um, out of myself. It's like psychology to me, you know, just getting it out on paper and um, finding peace with it. Whereas the face ones, the most recent ones, um, they wake me up in the middle of the night and I don't know what they are. I don't know what the stories are going to be. And I start drawing them and then the story comes. Um, and I'm not very good with the written word. And so, um, and I don't get the captions for them. So I have to come up with that. I know the story and I know what it is, but um, the captions are not there. Whereas with the um, humanoids, the faceless, the caption comes with the story that I'm going through. So it's a little easier for me to draw those. It just comes to you. Uh-huh. The caption is there. And so it's like, okay, most of the work is done. Now I just draw my experiences. Whereas with the faces, I have to come up with the caption and it takes me sometimes weeks. I, I believe that. There, it, it's funny though, it looks like each of them, uh, and, and this is in the newer work, sorry, that she's talking mm -hmm. about, um, it looks as though, to me, and I'm a word person, I would write the caption first, mm -hmm. you know, and then the, then the drawing would come out of, out of that for me. 
do you feel like the caption sometimes changes the work when you when you come up with that? No, because the caption comes with so the humanoids, the faceless, the older work. Um, it it's about the stories that I go through on everyday basis. So the story is there, um, but it's um, conveniently the um, caption is already there in my head. Okay. So the story doesn't change. Whereas um, with the faces, well, the story is there. It's the feelings. It's not a, the faces don't really have stories. They have they have um, feelings. So like anxieties and fears and um, you know happiness. Um, so I guess I there's no caption, so I can come up with whatever I want for that. But that's the difficult part. Okay, gotcha. Do you feel like it sometimes changes you when you come, or not changes, but affects you when, yes. when you find the caption? Yes. Yeah. I find that the faces, they come to me um, with the emotions, and then I find myself going through these emotions. So they're almost like a forecast. Um, whereas the faceless uh, figures, the stories, it's the stuff that I go through, and it's like an not an afterthought. It's a, um, it's the work that I do afterwards, just to get things through and like process them in my head. Does that make sense? It does. It does, and it makes me wish that I could draw. <laughs> For you to be able to express yourself this way, and uh, it, well, it's just a beautiful thing, and you've got to feel like you're exercising some things when you do this, yeah? Um, I, I, so let me ask you, um, when did you start drawing? When did you initially recognize that you have this within you? I've always drawn. I've always um, scribbled and um, for a period um, of maybe 10 years, I uh, worked at an, uh, an office. So I had an office job. I did interior architecture. Um, and so um, drawing got put away on the shelf and I didn't really do any, I mean, I would scribble a little bit, but I noticed that um, I would come home and I would be depleted because um, Interior architecture is very technical. When I went to school, I thought it would be, oh, you know, designing and creative, and it's not. It's very technical, and so my brain doesn't work that way, and so I would be very depleted, and so I would come home, and I would, um, as I was eating, I um, subconsciously would pick up a, a pen and just, like, just scribble, like, do little squares, do little triangles, and, and that would fill me up again. And so, um, and that's when I realized I need to start doing art. You know, it makes me happy. It fills me. And um, yeah, technical stuff, it just, it, it eats at my uh, spirit. And I just, I was just dying. And so I, you know, I'm like, I have to do something with art. Be more creative. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm glad you had that revelation. Do you still do you still do interior design? I don't. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. No, I do um, this full time. That's awesome. Yeah. You know what? I, I interview artists of so many different ilk, and you'd be surprised at how many people I've talked with who started in architecture. Really? And and this is playwrights. You know, mm -hmm. not just sculptors and and people who work with ceramics, but yeah, sculptors and musicians begin in architecture. I just find that really fascinating. Someday I'm going to figure out what the <laughs> what the real meaning is behind that, how that happens so often. I, I mean, I know it's it's organization. I think, and see, and I'm not organized at all, scramble in here. <laughs> um, but I think with architecture, when you go in and you study architecture, you you think it's going to be more creative than it really is. Oh. Um, yeah, you have this perception that it's you're going to create, you're going to um, just create interiors and 
you know, interiors or, or um, buildings, and it'll be a creative job, and it's very technical. It just is. I mean, there, it's a lot of math. It's a lot of, I mean, it's just technical. And I think that might be it. It might be just the perception that it's artsy, but it's not really. Gotcha. I, I do know that um, when Ayn Rand was uh, working on, uh, I think the Fountainhead, not Atlas Shrugged, she decided to study architecture to help her with the organization of the story. So she kind of went the, the other way with it. She had a different appreciation for architecture. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just a little side story. And we've got to go to our first break already. Oh, already. So hold on just a moment, please. And, and you hold on to stick with us for just about a minute. We'll be right back with Carolina Adams. Aloha. I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Okay, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ray Starling. We co-host a show called Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, every Wednesday, 4 to 5 p.m. It's really interesting. You know, Ray has a way of unzipping these guys. He, he asks them these questions, and all this stuff tumbles out, and we find out stuff we would never know about without Ray's questions. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome, uh, Jay. I, I'm very pleased to be your... Um, Ed McMahon, uh, every Wednesday at 4 o'clock here uh, on, uh, on the Internet. So you can join us and see what's happening in the energy world. And there is a lot going on. So join us uh, every Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Yeah, come around. Be energized right here on ThinkTech. Aloha. Hi, we're back. We're live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. I'm Donna Blanchard, your host, and I am talking with Carolina Adams, who is an artist that I, I discovered in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, in a little shop called On the Edge. I'm so glad I happened into that gallery. And if you, I just want to say now, if you are anywhere near Scottsdale, go into that gallery. They have a lot of really cool work. We'd like to support all of them. Particularly, you will love seeing Carolina's art there. Also, um, carolinaadams.com, and that's Carolina with a K. Is that the way you pronounce your name? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Glad I got it. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, okay, so uh, if we could, we're, can you talk about the actual, um, what your day looks like? If you, I'm, if you wake up in the middle of the night sometimes and you need to create... Are you, do you have a structure to your day normally, or do you just go whatever you get, however you get moved? Um, no, there's no, there's no structure um, around me or in me. <laughs> no structure. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just fly with whatever. But um, uh, so I'll get up in the middle of the night. Um, and it, it, it's usually around 3 o'clock, so I don't know if it's 3 um, a.m. and I don't know if it's, you know, I've got enough sleep or what, but um, uh, an idea will pop in or a feeling. And so um, I'll try to go back to sleep and not act on it, and it won't let me. So then, you know, after half an hour, I'll come out and I'll start drawing. And, and this is only with, the, with faces, with the newer work. Oh. Um, and so... Um, my newest piece of that is, um, I actually haven't done one in a while. I went back to doing faceless figures um, that came back into, when I started doing faces, my faceless went away. And, um, and so I concentrated on the, on the face, creating the face um, emotions. And then um, probably uh, two months ago, um, I stopped with the faces and the faceless figures came back in. And so it, it kind of, they kind of sh um, shuffle, you know, between one. And but um, my most recent face was my um, fears are choking me. I don't know if you've seen that one. And it's about, um, I just recently got diagnosed with um, uh, a little bit. It's going up and down and up and down, um, uh, thyroid issues. 
And so um, with thyroid comes uh, anxiety. And so, um, mm, and so with, so I've never experienced anxiety before. And so um, to me, it was crazy fearful that it's stuff that you can't control, fears that you can't control, and they're not, um, they're not rational fears. And so, um, so I did that, that drawing of um, the fears. And that was before I even knew about my thyroid. But you felt the anxiety. I must have felt the anxiety. So this is why I say that it's a subconscious part. It's not conscious like with the faceless figures that I do. It's subconscious. Because I must have, like you said, I must have um, um, realized that the anxiety and fears were there, but I just didn't recognize it as that. And then a few months later, I, um, a few weeks later, I um, found out that I my levels were off and now they're back to normal so we'll oh, see good oh good yeah. a little higher than normal but in the in the normal range yeah okay so. good i know thyroid can be a tricky a tricky thing to diagnose and stay on top of and treat that's what i've heard um, as we're go as you as you're talking we're showing some of the pieces and i'm going to i i'm just going to say um, Zuri's whispering the titles of them to me so I could tell people, but I didn't want to inter interrupt you. So I'm just going to say everybody should go to the website and look at them because the pieces become even more meaningful when you hear, when you hear the titles. We had, um, my, this is My Many Parts that we're looking at. This is one of the older pieces, the faceless. It's interesting that you say when you started working with the faces, the face less ones left because the you know the, the faceless ones have this amazing body this figure that goes along with them yes. and when you do the face work the body becomes this just expression of lines that is kind of phenomenal thank you and it fears me when one goes away because the faceless are that's those are the ones that people connect with most and so um for a while i couldn't produce them because i it just it wasn't in me and i didn't want to just do something that wasn't authentic or because you can see the difference you'll see the difference with the ones that are authentic and it's the pain that i'm going through like the grief i just there's one that's called grief um and it's actually the newer one um, and that was um, about my dog. And you can feel the, the, the grief, the, the emotion, and as opposed to if I did it today. You know, it was, I lost him a year ago. It was about my dog. And I lost him a year ago. And so, um, you know, they're my babies. We don't have kids. So I have a stepson, but we don't have, like, my own. And so, you know, they're my babies. Um, so... The, it was really bad and today you know i'm okay so but if so if i recreated that piece it wouldn't be the same you could tell the difference yeah do, um do you have any training um i'm not no i've taken one class and um in that class interestingly um my the professor said that whatever when you draw you always draw with a pen, ink. It has to be ink because then you if you make a mistake, you remember that mistake as opposed to um, erasing it with a, yeah. So that's like the one thing that I remember from that class. Oh, wow, interesting. So, uh, well, and I look at your work and uh, I find it kind of amazing when you talk about how you have no structure, you know, inside <laughs> um, or out but your pieces are so definitive. I mean, those lines are so clear and sharp. Mm -hmm. um, That's the interesting part is that it's, I, it, it, I'm so scrambled in my head and I hate saying that about myself, but I am, I'm very scrambled. As I'm talking to you, I'm thinking of other things. So I may be off topic in a second or not even finishing the sentence um, because there's such a mess up there. But when, but I'm very, when I create and when it comes out, it's very minimalistic and it's very architectural. And I think 
that's where the healing starts, you know, from the scramble over here to the clean lines. I'm hoping, I don't know if that's what I'm thinking is happening, but. This one that we're looking at is called Pulling Myself Out of the Dark. Mm -hmm. um, that is just so remarkable to me, the, um, the emotions that it brings up for me when I look at it. Uh, I can understand how this would be therapeutic for you to do this kind of work. And, and so are you ever drawing and really surprised by what comes out? With the faces. With the faces, not with, with the faces. faces. Because I don't know where they're going. Yeah. I never know what story or what emotion they are going to convey. Um, with the faceless pieces, I, I pretty much have the control over those. Okay, okay. And, but the faces, you, how are you creating, what's the medium for the faces? It's um, e uh, ink, uh, brush ink, and um, pencils. Oh, and pencils. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm obsessed with those. I love uh, them. And I see them in New York. So when I do shows, um, people who are attracted to those faces, I know they're going to be from the East Coast somewhere. And it's always true. It's always like either um, uh, New York, New Jersey. I've had people um, in um, New Orleans. Um, so those are the Arizona people don't really um, get them. I think they're distracting and they're not pretty faces. So I think some people might get distracted by them, but I'm obsessed with them. I love them and I love the fact that I don't know what's going to come out. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in love with that idea, too. And I have to say, the two pieces that I bought are f from your older work. They're the faceless ones. But um, I, they're, oh, we're going we're gonna to look at them again. The battle is mine to lose. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. That's a good one. Well, Did I tell you the story behind that one? Uh, do, I'm sorry, do you want your story behind it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love to hear it. Oh, um, I thought I, I emailed it to you. It's, so it's, it's basically about um, fighting and overcoming my fears. Um, and so uh, we all, I mean, life is about choices, like all the choices that we make. And so I don't like um, being on a boat. I get motion sickness and I don't really like taking pills. And so my husband and I were divers. And so if the dive is half an hour um, boat ride, I won't go. If it's under, I'll go. And we were doing a, um, a whale shark uh, dive, and that was an eight hour in the middle of nowhere, middle of the ocean, looking for these creatures to dive with. And I knew that, and I said, I don't think I'm gonna do it because I'm, not, I'm just gonna throw up the whole time. And so at the last minute I said, you know what? I can't let this control me. And, and so I, I ended up going and it was the best day of my life and just swimming with them and diving with them. And that started my, the, these things are not gonna control me. Like my fears are not gonna control me. And that just, that was the start of me saying, you know, if I feel bad, I'll throw up. <laughs> but I was paralyzed by not wanting to do that. Not, you know, just being in my comfort zone and, and just, so that was a good one. I love that story. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is a really good story. I, I saw that piece and I just immediately thought, um, you know, I, I, I manage a theater. I, I am constantly making decisions. It's a big part of my day. And mm -hmm. decisions that really affect this wonderful entity here in Hawaii and I sometimes feel like am I making the right decision you know it, it's very common to for me to second guess myself is this the perfect decision is this the best one not just for the theater but for myself and I I moved out here to Hawaii having never been here before specifically for this theater and I just thought the battle is mine to lose that you know I'm at least I'm in it at least I'm jumping into it and I take responsibility for this that everything all of that just came up when I looked at that piece I love looking at it every day now oh I love it <laughs> okay we're gonna go to our second break and we'll come back and talk some more and see some more of your art uh, please stay put we'll be back in about a minute we'll see you on the other side 
Aloha, my name is Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, and I'm the host of Sustainable Hawaii at thinktechhawaii.com. We air live on the internet and also on Oceanic Channel 16. I'd invite you to come for a fresh new show every Tuesday from 12 to 1 o'clock. I try to bring on guests that give us a different viewpoint on aspects of sustainability in Hawaii, as well as trying to unpack some of the difficult concepts of measuring and achieving sustainability, particularly with regard to sustainable economic growth and prosperity in Hawaii. Please join us every Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. Mahalo, aloha. Aloha, my name is Reg Baker, and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, Business in Hawaii is a program that talks about the positive stories in Hawaii. Uh, we're tired of hearing all the negativity. We don't want to hear about all the downside. We want to hear positive stories about Business in Hawaii, and that's what Business in Hawaii is all about. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock. Go to Livestream.com for that live broadcast, and we also rebroadcast on Olelo uh, 54 and OC16. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the show. Take care, and we'll see you next week. Aloha. Hi, we're back. This is Center Stage. I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm talking with artist Carolina Adams via Skype. She is in Arizona, and we're having a lovely conversation. I hope you're enjoying it, too. It's so, it, it, um, I cannot tell you how many times I would go. I grew up near Chicago, so I'd go to the Art Institute, and I would look at the, all of the art there and think, why? Why did Matisse choose to do that? And, and, you know, why, Renoir, what about the guy with the gold chain? Why did you find him so interesting? So it's really nice to be able to talk with an artist about what, what really was going on in your mind, how the art affects you, and how your day-to-day -day life affects the art. I appreciate your time. Of course. <laughs> um, so let's show my other piece because I would love to hear the story behind this. The, the other piece that I got is the putting myself back together. Um, do, you have, do you remember when you created this? Yeah, I think that one is pretty much a self-explanatory one. It was, you know, being broken and um from an experience and um finding the strength to put myself back together and not let that experience um not bringing it with me mm. it was a about a, a betray a friend's betrayal and so now that i make friends i try not to judge it's still in me you know i mean i still am cautious but um but it's not it hasn't it hasn't um it hasn't affected me the way it could have yeah well that's beautiful you know when i when i look at that piece it of course reminded me of a time when i was broken as mm -hmm. happens to many of us you don't get into your 30s 40s or 50s usually without having some story like that um and i looked at it and i thought you know, when, when you are broken and you put yourself back together, you, you know more. When you put the pieces back together, you know more about um, who you are and what you need and where you're going. So it, it not only, it was a piece that I, it's a piece that I look at and it does make me remember mm -hmm. um, some tough times, but it also makes me, it, it's, it sort of buoys me to look at and think, I'm better because of it. Yes. It doesn't make yeah. you bitter about it, yeah. Right, I'm better, yeah. not bitter. Bro, yeah. <laughs> Where do you um, see yourself going? You're doing gallery shows, and we would love to have you come out here to Hawaii. Uh, oh, I would love to come out there. Oh my gosh, we gotta. Uh, we'll work on that. We'll we'll figure out how to make that happen because I just love the idea of walking to into a room that is covered in your work. Um, oh. Thank you. <laughs> uh, do you feel, uh, oh, oh, well, yeah, let me, st let me stay with that. You are doing shows currently mostly in Arizona, or are you traveling around the country? Arizona. Okay. And that's my, my goal is to um, get out there and uh, maybe 
get my work to the East Coast. For some reason, I'm obsessed with the East Coast. Um, New York, New Jersey, you know, Miami. I think that's where um, I'll find um, people that will connect with my work. We got to follow those obsessions. Mm. You know, every time I've had something poking around in my brain that just won't leave me alone, there's, there's something there. We have an East Coast here on Oahu, though. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> <laughs> and now Hawaii. <laughs> come to come to Hawaii. We'll show your work here. Um, and how are you? Can we talk a little bit about the process of? Sure. We've talked about creating the work. I'd like to talk about promoting and getting the work out there. How how do you go about doing that? I'm not very good. <laughs> I'm not very good. My um, I have my website. My husband keeps pushing. If it wasn't for my husband, I wouldn't even have a website. Um, he created the website, he found the name, he was, he's, he's extremely supportive and he's really a, a really good guy. Um, but um, he just um, created a Instagram for me. Nice. That's a good venue for you to be involved in, yeah. Yeah. I'm not on <laughs> Facebook. You, you are on Facebook? I'm not. Oh, you're not. Okay. Personally, I am. I mean, I, I'll visit my Facebook page, you know, once a week or so with that. Um, but not, I don't have a business page. Uh -huh. no, I'm a total, you know, backwoods kind of person when it comes to technology. <laughs> well, you'll, you, if you need to get there, then you will. What does your husband do for a living? Um. He's an engineer, so he's got that right, uh -huh. left brain, um, you know, let's get things done. This is how you do it, structured. Yeah. If I had to select an occupation for you to marry, I would have chosen engineer. Really? <laughs> well, yeah. It's a, it's a great match for, for both of you. It probably will never get dull. Yes. And you know what? He inspires a lot of my work. He <laughs> says... He laughs and he says it's the the um, the difficult times or the hardships that I um, depict, but it's not. I mean, we um, we have a pretty good relationship, you know. But because um, it's right brain versus left brain, we'll fight a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it's always um, uh, I'll learn from how he sees me, um, and and I think it helps him to see how he behaves from my point of view. So I think, you know, we're, we're, I think we're a pretty good match. It sounds like it. Yeah. It sounds like it. So with the, with the gallery, with the On the Edge gallery, did you just go in with some of your work one day and say, Here Yeah, I mean, it's the most, because of this, I'm going to tell you how it happened, but because of how it all happened, I believe that there is, everybody has a plan. When we're souls in the, um, uh, in the universe, I think we go, okay, this is, these are the things that we want to experience. And so um, we have these major points that we want to experience, and then the rest is up to us. But so how it happened was I was doing um, portrait photography, for about a year and it was going okay you know I was, I was being creative but it wasn't I was still looking for subconsciously I was still looking for I don't think this is it yet and so I connected with a um, with someone on Facebook and they did inks and so that reminded me of the stuff that I did in college the you know the heartbreaks and and it was just scribbles it wasn't anything fancy it was just with a regular pen but it was a character that I um, came up with, and um, and so I uh, that reminded me of this stuff, and I haven't seen it in a long time. And so I went and I dug up my old college portfolio, and I found the drawings, and they were nothing impressive, <laughs> but the emotions were there. I could feel the emotions, and one drawing wasn't um, finished. It was a triptych that I was doing, and it was called. Um, uh, finding my spirituality, but it wasn't finished. And so I said, okay, I'm going to finish this one. 
you know, just because I know where I am now. Um, I know what I believe. And, and so I, um, I got it out and I laid it out on my, um, and it was a pretty big piece. Um, and I laid it out on my dining room table and a friend of ours came and he saw those and he said, you have to show them to a gallery. And so I normally wouldn't take a compliment like that or take it seriously, especially given these are just made with a, you know, just drawn with a regular pen, nothing special. And for some, something inside me said, okay, let's do it. And I did. And by the way, he just went and he visited on the edge gallery and he got their business card and he handed it to me and he goes, try these guys. And so I um, emailed uh, the drawings to them and they, so they set up a, a time to meet with me and jury me in and they accepted me. And I mean, you don't really get accepted by galleries. So it's not like, oh yeah, you know, like easy. It was just, I think it was just meant. And plus I'm a, um, Commitment home. I don't like to commit to anything, um, and I needed to sign a year contract with them, and so that created some fear in me. But I did, and it locked me into that style. So before, I never really stuck to one style. I did oils, I did pastels, I did um, acrylics, but nothing really. I never created a body of work or like a collection of anything. But because of this, I had to stick to this particular thing. And it really, it grew me. And it, as an artist, it, it did amazing things for my self-esteem. We talked about the, the child in me that was never um, accepted by other kids. And it validated that kid inside me. So that's why I say that the universe has these plans for us. Because I would have never, what made me go and um, say, okay, yeah, I'll send these photos to a gallery. A rational person would never do that because they weren't good enough in my eyes. But something made me, push me to do that. And they accepted me. And so, and then another gallery came and found me there, which again, doesn't really happen, you know? So I know that I'm either God's little project because God thinks that I'm not doing very well down here. So he decided to create a little project <laughs> or it proves the point that everybody has, uh, you know, a plan and the stars align for these little, you know, uh, points in life to me. At least. That's how I see it. Yeah, I, I really believe that's a, that's a <laughs> That's a wonderful story, and it, it just, I, I really believe that when you are working within your passion, when you follow that, when you're willing to just say, you know, if, you're, if you are in a river, for some reason you fall out of the boat, they say that you've got, you've got to get your feet downstream, but you pick them up. You've got to pick up your feet and let the water take you. Uh -huh. um, so that's that's my analogy for you picked up your feet when you jumped into the gallery and said, okay, this is something that's meant to be. You're in exactly the right place when you follow that passion and say, okay, and then you, you get another gallery out of that and then you get some crazy woman from Hawaii contacting you and say, I've got to talk to you. <laughs> and that's when beautiful things happen because clearly you have a gift. I mean, you're expressing some really difficult emotions in both your newer work, you know, the faceless and the faces, mm -hmm. but they're also, they all have such joy there, there is joy even in the difficult ones. You know, it, it's there. I, now that I've started doing uh, shows, I hear people uh, talk about what they see and how they connect. And a lot of people will laugh. They will laugh out loud saying, oh my God, this is me, or I can't believe that. And these are things that um, are very, um, hardships, you know, like uh, putting myself back together. People will laugh. Oh my God, there's little uh, screws that she has on the on the ground and she's putting herself and I'm, I don't do it on purpose, but for some reason it comes out in a humorous way. Mm -hmm. The You know, the pain and the, the, the aches that I go through, they come through as um, 
just humorous things. I, I'm not sure what the purpose of that is, but I love that it does. I love it that I don't know if it's maybe because I'm healing and so it's not as sad anymore. Now maybe. that I said it, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. And I hope that. I'm sorry that we have to wrap up. It's been delightful talking oh. with you. I hope that you just keep keep going with it and uh, keep spreading out. We, I hope to see you here soon, but I'll keep an eye on you know your website and your Facebook, your Instagram, and uh, uh, follow you and see where you go because I'm I'm really I, I'm just thrilled with your work and I think it was healing for me to look at it too. Initially, I was a little embarrassed to admit which pieces I thought about not posting them here, you know, not, not showing them because they're very, very personal, but oh, yeah. it's healing to talk about them and to express that, you know. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay, we've got to wrap up now. Thank you very much for being here, Carolina. Thank you for watching. There's a few other people that I would like to thank. Our studio overlord, Zuri Bender, who is in my ear and was very extra helpful during this interview. Thank you, Zuri. I'd also like to thank our floor manager, Nick Sexton, who's right over there. Thanks. <laughs> and the man who puts it all together, Jay Fidel. Thank you very much for having me on Center Stage. And we will talk to you next week. Bye.